Okay, so what we're gonna do um, these couple hours that are coming up, we're gonna go over all the technicalities of the course. <laughs> it's online, so it's a little complicated. There's some stuff you need to know. And then I will introduce the first author that we're gonna talk about, um, and then we'll be done for the day. So first of all, I wanna go over some of your names. I wanna get to know you a little bit. So um, the way I memorize your name, I learn actually your last name because um, it's easier for me to grade. <laughs> and the way I remember you is to connect you to uh, the country of origin of your last name. I like to imagine everybody's ancestors. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me if you please, as, as I call your name, just let me know where your name is from. And then you can tell me if you've ever taken philosophy before. That'll help me also see the level of the class. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Brown. Brown, you can um, uh, unmute yourself. Let me know origin of your name. And if it's the first time uh, doing philosophy. Brown, okay. Castro. Where is Castro? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Hi. Oh, well, my origin of my last name is like, I think Italian is someone like that. In Europe, but European, but I'm not actually like European. Okay. <laughs> but it's like, probably like, my ancestors somewhat. All right. Sounds good. Castro, first time philosophy or not? Uh, I took, well, I transferred like two, like two years ago ish, but I took only one of one in a different school. Oh, got you. Okay, good. Welcome, Castro. Uh, Davidov. Is Davidov here? I don't see. Delgado? Yes, unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm Helene Delgado. Actually, I just had to Google the origin of my last name because I've never been interested. But it says it's from Spain, and obviously I'm Spanish, so... I'm actually from Ecuador. Okay. And yeah, I get to see. Thank you, Delgado. Okay. Um, Gatdula. Gatdula, are you here? I see you. Can you unmute yourself? It's on the bottom left hand. Ah, you can't speak. Okay. Oh, okay, got you. Okay, Gatdula, origin of your last name in the chat. <laughs> Philippines. Okay, thank you, Gatula. Um, okay, uh, George. Is George here? This is the last name. Or Thierry George? Uh, yes. Last name, where is it from? Uh, it's, uh, you pronounce it right, it's uh, French. It's a French last name. Uh, yeah. So is the, um, uh, well, I was, I'm of Haitian heritage. Okay. So, uh, my first name is also French as well. Yep. Excellent. Okay, welcome, Georges. I'll say the French word. It'll make <laughs> that's more exotic. Okay, Zaruma. Is Zaruma here? Zaruma? I don't see. Okay, Haynes. Is Haynes here? I don't see either. Hooper? Hooper. I see Hooper. Yes. Hello. Sorry, my camera is currently broken, so I'm er currently ordering a new one. So that's why my camera isn't. So I'll be joining on my phone shortly. But I also had to look up my last name's origin. And I guess it was dominantly in Australia. So I guess I don't really know the answer. Maybe <laughs> Ireland too. So I wouldn't really know. We'll put you as Australia. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's fair. <laughs> I guess that's fair. Um, so yeah, this was my first time taking for, uh, philosophy. Or actually my first time taking a summer class in general. So yeah. Excellent. Welcome. Uh, Jalal. Jalal here. Um, I had to look up my last name also. Um, it's of Arabic descent and um, it means like majesty or support, superiority, but I'm Bengali, so. <laughs> okay, got you. Very nice name. Okay, I, I can never have low self-esteem with a name like that. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Khalik or Khalik, I don't know how you say it. Um, where are you? I know you're here. Okay, so um, my... Last name is uh, also Ar Arabic to son, uh, but I'm also Bengali. How do so, you say how do you say your last name? Kalik. Kalik. Okay. Kalik. Yeah, Kalik. Kalik. That's, yeah. And this is not my first philosophy course. I have taken, I think, intro, but like that was like maybe five years ago or something. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Kogan, is Kogan here? Yeah, hi. Um, Kogan, it's 
Eastern European Ashkenazi Jew from the tribe, like <laughs> the priests. Okay. <laughs> Pohen. Yeah. And this is my uh, first ever philosophy course. Okay. Excellent. Kogan, did you have a brother that took class? Yeah. Okay. Elon. My brother. Yeah. <laughs> And the whole family I'm going to have now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, say hi to him for me. I will. All right, cool. Corpaz. Corpaz, are you there? Hello. Um, my surname is Polish. Okay. And um, is your face available to us? <laughs> the camera. Can you turn on your camera? Oh, um, can I do that next class? Yes, you can. Okay, good. All right, Corpaz, welcome. Uh, Marmol, Marmol, I don't know if it's French or something else. Are you there? Marmol, Marmol, okay, not there. Uh, Mia. Mia, can you mute yourself? I know you're here. <laughs> oh, you're um, in the chat. Okay. <laughs> Mia, why can't you talk? Oh, your mic, okay. So, Arabic also? Yes, okay, excellent, Mia. <clears throat> okay, good. Uh, let's see. Multani. Multani here? No? Okay. Pavlova? Pavlova here? No? Filippo? Hi, uh, my last name origin is Greek, but I'm my family is from Thailand. How did you end up with a Greek last name? <laughs> um, my biological father's stepdad is Greek. Oh, okay, wonderful. All right, welcome. Uh, Pokrel. Pokrel. Hi, uh, my last name uh origins from nepal i'm from nepal so i don't know how it originated but yeah it's, it's you know, i don't know anybody I, I don't know this last name belonging to any other places i tried looking it up so yeah i guess it's nepal good good do we, how do you pronounce it pokrel pokrel okay excellent welcome uh y'all should look up your last names i'm sure they have very interesting histories um romero is romero here no, okay. Ruiz? Ruiz? No. Sing? Hello, my name is Gurkirat Singh, and my last name originated in Punjab, Khal Islam. Got you. Okay, well. And uh, this is my first time taking philosophy. Got you. Okay, good. Soto, Soto, you, yes. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, again. Uh, my last name is uh, of Spanish descent. It originated originated in Spain, and this is my first philosophy course. Okay, great. Thank you. Suresh. Good afternoon, Professor. My name is Nicholas Suresh. I'm a senior. My last name, <clears throat> excuse me, my last name is from India, but my, my, my grandfather, his name was Suresh, so my father just took on that name, and our first name, Nicholas, I'm pretty sure that's American. Okay. Thank you. Suresh, I had you before, right? Correct, Professor, for philosophy religion, um, philosophy 116. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, welcome back, Suresh. Nice to see you again. Okay. Nice to see you too. Thanks. Tarek, Tarek, Tarek. Is Tarek here? Um, hello, Professor. Um, my last name, I believe, is Arabic, but I guess all of South Asian people who are Muslims do have Arabic surnames. Um, I've taken the philosophy of religion course in my freshman year, so this is my second philosophy course. Okay, perfect. Uh, Valadares, Valadares, are you here? See you? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, hi, Professor. Um, my I had to Google my last name as well, and it said it's um, of Spanish origin, but my family is from Peru, oh. and this is my first time taking a philosophy course. Got you. And how do I say your name? Uh, Valladares. Valladares. Okay, excellent. Ruiz, you just popped back in. Ruiz. <laughs> Hello. Uh, according to the internet, my last name originates from Spain. Okay. And I am Spanish, but I'm not from Spain. So. Okay. <laughs> excellent. 
uh, welcome. Uh, Walrat or Valor. Walrat. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, since I'm a hi professor and hi everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, my name is Alicia and I pronounce my last name Walrath because uh, since I'm American and I've just grew grown up here. Um, it's a um, it's, uh, German. Uh, I had a, obviously don't look German, but I had a great, uh, let me say, great, great grandfather who I guess was German and uh, I have a long, my family has a long history in New York. So uh, just been here from, I think like, 1700s and then my dad married uh my mom and she's from El Salvador so that's why <laughs> <laughs> that explains um and I have never taken a philosophy course before this is my first one all right excellent a lot of first timers okay did I miss anyone um just raise your virtual hand if I missed you um okay good all right excellent um so let me continue my long list of technicalities okay what you're gonna do right now all of you, um, oh, I see Romero, okay. Uh, hi, Romero. Uh, Spain, okay, excellent. Okay, nickname given to people who came from Rome. Okay, let me write you down really quick. Romero, Spain, excellent. Um, Castellanos, did I miss you? Yes, because, yes, I know why. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay. <laughs> let me add you down here. And Spanish, right? Uh, yeah, it's from Spain. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Hi, Castellanos. Okay. Now, everybody grab your phone. This will be the first and last time <laughs> I ask you to do this. I want you to send me an email so I can reach you. Um, not your QC email, the email you use. <laughs> the email you use most of the time. I want you to send me an email to my email right here. I'm putting it in the chat. Okay. So send me right now an email and in the subject line, you just put your full name. That way, if I need to find you during the next couple of weeks, I, I can find you. If you're missing something, I can talk to you. Or if you if you disappeared, <laughs> I can track you down. So send me right now an email um, with your first and last name in the subject line, and that's all I'm gonna need. Okay, now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some renaming because you will be having some, we will be having some breakout rooms, and I'm gonna divide you by numbers. <laughs> so. You, I want you to rename yourself with the number first and then your last name. I don't need your first name. So, I mean, you can if you want to, but um, so first the number and then your last name. So I'm going to tell you the number. I'm going to go down my list. So number one is going. So do you know how to rename yourself? So you go to the top right hand corner of your screen. There's a little three dots. Right. And then when you click on that, you have the option to rename yourself. At least that's how it works on my screen. So we're going to do that right now. So a number ones are Brown, Castro, Davidov and Delgado. Those are the number ones. So rename yourself right now. Put one first and then your last name. Number twos. Gatdula, George, Saruma, Haynes. Those are number twos. Number threes, Hooper, Jalal, Kalik, Kogan. Number four, Korpaz, Marmol, Mia, Multani. Number five, Pavlova, Filippo, Pokrel, Romero. Number six, Ruiz, Singh, Soto, Suresh. Number seven, Tarek, Valladares, Walroth, and Castellanos. Um, so let me see all your renames. <laughs> so you should what have was my number? Sorry, Castellanos. Yes, yes number uh, eight, I think. Hold on. No. Seven, seven. Thank seven. you. So um, your, your number should be first. Otherwise, it doesn't work in the breakout room thing. So Mia, put your number first before your name. Uh, let's see, Ruiz. Uh, what was mine as well? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, your number. Uh, let's see. What's your, Terry is your last name? <laughs> uh, no, what's your last name again, Thierry? George's. George, okay. You're number two. Uh, Thank you. Hi, Davidov. Um, Davidov, you are number one. Okay, let's see if everyone has their number. Valladares, your number seven. Are you having trouble? 
Uh, looks good. Davidov, you're number one. Okay, the rest of you look pretty good. Marmol, Trouble, you're number four. <laughs> Marmol, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm having an issue um, adding a number. I'm not sure how to do that. I want to rename yourself. So you go to the top right hand corner of your screen. You'll see three little dots. You click on that and you'll see the option to rename. Um, and then you should be able to do that. Uh, Marmol, where is your last name from? Um, my last name is Spanish, but I'm not European. Both my parents are from the Dominican Republic. Davidov, where is your last name from? Now that I caught you. Davidov, are you there? Can, can you unmute? No answer. Uh, yes, I cut off. Okay. Um, so Davidov is saying Bukarian. Okay. Great. Let's see. Um, let's see if everybody has their number. Let me just check really quick. Ah, this chat is blocking. Okay, yes, excellent. Okay, so when you guys come in the class from now on, you always um, change your name. So I can put you in your groups right away because every day that we have class, we'll have a section, uh, first will be group work. So you wanna come in the classroom, immediately change your name. So remember that number, don't make me find that number each time. <laughs> remember that number and then you'll put it on, rename yourself and then I can put you in, in your groups. Uh, Multani, hello. Um, Multani, you're group uh, four. Can you rename yourself with number four before your name? Can you hear me, Multani? Okay. All right. Yes, give me one second. Okay, great. Okay, looks pretty good so far. All right, so let's continue with this logistics. Okay, so in as I'll be lecturing throughout the, these two weeks, two, three weeks, um, I'm going to ask you if you need to say anything to, to raise your virtual hand, not to speak up, right? Um, so don't never speak up. <laughs> Always raise your virtual hand and then I'll call on you. So I want you to get you guys to try that right now. Everybody raise their virtual hand. This should be also, let me see. Um, this should be on the bottom bar, the menu bar. Um, how do you guys do it here? Reactions maybe? Yeah, reactions. I don't know if you have that. Okay, I guess you know how to do this. Okay. <laughs> I see all those pretty hands. Okay. Um, Thierry, Hooper, problems with the hand? Hussein, Castellanos, Soto, you'll have to work it out, right? At some point, ask. Um, Sorry, I'm kind of lost. I don't know. Where are you? I'm, I'm losing you. <laughs> Where'd Soto go? Um, Thierry, your hand, Hussein, your hand. I'm trying to find it, I don't see okay. it. Bottom, bottom uh, menu tab, you see the little smiley face called reactions? You wanna, there you go. Yep, I see it, I see it. Okay, great, thank you, Soto. Uh, uh, it looks good, it looks good. I think everybody has their hand. Let me check the second, there's two pages, I hate that. Um, okay, so, okay, great. I don't even know where I am anymore. Uh, where am I, can't see myself. Ah, where am I? Do you guys see me? <laughs> oh no, I don't know where I am. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna wait. No, nope, nothing. Oh well. <laughs> okay. All right. Next thing. Yes. Uh, you can take down your hands. <laughs> Please take down your hands. <laughs> um, good. Uh, yes, I'll get to all the homework business in a bit. All right. So uh, last last thing with regards to zoom logistics i'm gonna ask you throughout the whole class to keep your cameras on because i'm constantly uh dialoguing with you right i'm, I'm lecturing but i'm constantly asking questions expecting uh expecting questions from you so i will constantly be looking at my screen looking at you right so i will ask that you keep your your faces on the whole time so that we can interact and i don't have to uh, lecture to a black hole <laughs> so uh, so thank you for that. Um, so if your camera is still not good, make sure you fix it by next time so that we can have um, an interaction. Multani, you have a question? Or is it just your hand? <laughs> still up. Okay, looks like that. All right, let's get into Blackboard logistics. Um, so very simple, the menu, the left-hand menu on Blackboard, there's only one, two, three, four, five tabs I want you to remember <laughs> when you look on Blackboard. The first one is the home tab. This is where all the announcements are. 
Then you have the syllabus tab. Hopefully you have your syllabus in front of you. Then you have the Zoom classroom, which you can enter directly through the menu. You can enter the classroom with the passcode uh, philosophy. Uh, all the lectures will be recorded. So there will be a, this tab will bring you, so recorded lectures tab will bring you to my YouTube channel and to our class playlist. So if you miss any anything, you can always go there and, and um, catch up. And then the last uh, tab is tests, assignments, grades. And on that, you will see the grade book, which will feature only your test grades. The rest is pass or fail, so I don't feel the need to put it up. If you did it, it, it worked. If you didn't do it, you know you just missed two points, <laughs> right? So I will only put your test grades so you can keep track of your test uh, results. And then uh, you will have several folders in that uh, tab. And it's, 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 a, it's a link to my Google Drive. So it will bring you to the drive. And then you will have different folders where to put in the different assignments, which we'll talk about um, uh, in a bit shortly. Uh, yes, one thing, <laughs> this is important. Um, hold on, I see, oh yeah. Okay, so um, this is a bit unorthodox that I use a drive for tests because you basically have the right, you're going to be able to see everybody's tests, <laughs> right? So this is slightly unorthodox. So what I usually do, I do two things. First of all, we're all going to take an oath right now that we will be respectful and not look at anybody's tests except our own <laughs> and include this other assignments, right? Anything that's on this drive, you're not looking at, you're just looking at your own. You will do this out of respect for me, for your classmates and for yourself. So let's do the oath right now. Put your hand in the screen and swear silently. <laughs> I wanna see all those hands. Thierry, I don't see your hand. Um, those who have no uh, faces, please just raise virtual hands so I can see. <laughs> Great, y'all look very beautiful, right? Like that. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so now uh, here's the second part of this <laughs> of this uh, uh, drive thing. So, um, if you choose <laughs> to look at someone else's assignment and end up uh, basing your assignment on their assignment the consequences will be catastrophic. <laughs> so you will basically lose uh, all the points of that assignment. And so will the person that you copied from. I want you to know that. So um, you have to be very careful because you will be penalizing yourself and the other person. So you, you, you wanna really think twice before doing that. In fact, if you have the temptation to do that, come to me first, I will negotiate with you. Right. If you need to hand it in later, if you need more time, right? If if that's the reason you're trying to to do this uh, illegally, right? So come to me first. We'll work something out. Uh, don't don't feel the need to do that. Um, so yeah, the consequences are dire. Don't 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 test me. <laughs> and you need to know this also. I'm a little witchy, so I know <laughs> I know always who does it. Like I don't know. I have this beautiful gift <laughs> to know when it's not your work. Um, so that that goes by the way for um, looking at other people's work, but also using this stupid internet program. What is it called? Um, Chat G something. Chat GPT. Now there's a Google one too. Yes, whichever program you're doing, right? Um, I can tell, right, that it's not you. <laughs> so, uh, and the tests and essays and assignments are very, actually very uh, uh, targeted on the, the lectures. It's impossible to find um, anything from the internet that will give you the right answer, right? Because everything I'm asking is very personal and it's very, and it's based on all that I'm doing in the class, which is not, which you're, the internet is not going to, <laughs> <laughs> not going to help you so be very careful with that I'm that is the only time I turn la nasty right I'm a very nice person but I that is one thing that really really pushes my buttons okay we should be good okay I see a couple of questions Soto go ahead oh I apologize professor I didn't realize I didn't put my hand down okay got it Tarek um question Tarek, oh no, you just, okay. All right, excellent. Uh, great, all right, that's it for Blackboard. Now, let's go into the syllabus. Hopefully you have it in front of you, but I'll go over it anyways right now. So I was wondering if we could tweak the time. Um, I would like to have time to eat lunch. <laughs> so I was wondering if you guys would mind, it will be a shorter class time, um, but it will end 20 minutes later. So we would start at three and end with at five. So we would only end 20 minutes later, but we would start an hour later. 
So does anybody have a problem with us starting at three and ending at five? Raise your virtual hand. Filippo, tell me. I have work at five. Uh, is it, are you, are you at work when you're in the classroom or? No, I'm not, but it, it takes me about 20 minutes to get there. So it's perfect when the class ends at 4.40 and then at 20 minutes I run to work. Got you. Hussein, issue? Um, I was just wondering, did you say it's going to be from now on from three to five every day? That's what I'm trying to, <laughs> to do. Yes. <laughs> so. That would be on Tuesday and Thursday, right? Yep, only Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. Okay, yeah, sounds good. I don't right. have a problem. Valladares, issues? Valladares? Are you? Am I saying it right? Yes, Valladares. Uh, Delgado, issue? Um, I actually work at four, so, oh. uh-huh, that's why. Uh, so four is within the normal class time, right? <laughs> you know that, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's what I can do for where, where'd she go? Where'd she go? Uh, where did my worker go? Ah, yes, Filippo. <laughs> okay, Filippo, would you be okay with leaving at 4.40 and then having the recording to catch up the last bit of class? Would that be okay? Yeah, that, that works perfectly fine for me. Okay. Yeah. And Delgado, same for you, right? Um, uh, yeah, that would work for you. Uh, Valladares, last call. <laughs> oh, yes, that works for me as well, Professor. Okay. Excellent. So guys, the new time is three to five. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's very hard to Sorry, start. I had a, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you something. Yes. So I get out of work at 2.20, but for me to like go home and get on, I would be like maybe five, 10 minutes late. Is that okay? Um, can you do it from your phone while you go home? I can, but I have to drive, so I don't want to like drive and get on your class. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So the 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 being on time will be important because that's when we do the group work. So if you can find a way to put your phone to stick it in the thing, you know, in the car, so you're driving while looking at it. I'm totally bad advice. I know, <laughs> terrible well, advice. Yeah. Well, you know, if I'm driving, I, I can't really like do any work i'll just sit there and listen to you if that's okay i don't really mind yeah can you talk because it's breakout rooms you just have to talk okay yeah i can try okay let's let's see how that works all right good uh jalal you're muted if you don't mind would you just send out an announcement that class is three to five because i'm probably gonna forget three to five yes i'm definitely okay. yeah yeah okay thank you Okay, good. So we're more or less on the same page <laughs> with three to five. Okay, office hours, uh, each time I teach after class on Zoom. So if you need to talk about anything, and really it can be anything, it can be class related, or it can be connected to what we're doing. It can be anything you're dealing with, any problem you have in life <laughs> that's connecting somehow to what we're talking about. I'm happy to listen to you. So you can always come, um, you know, to these kind of office hours slash therapist hours. <laughs> so you're always welcome to come by right after class. My email is on the syllabus. Um, okay, so let me introduce a little bit before we get into all the course assignments and all that. Let me introduce uh, the course, what we're going to do. And then we'll go into all the assignments, then we'll take a short break, and then I'll introduce um, the next, um, the first author. Okay, so first of all, this class, um, actually, let me now pin myself so I can like, okay, great. Okay, so not working. Pin, pin, pin. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> all right, great. Okay, so, um, all right, so this class I've tailored, it's an ethics class, right? But um, to make it more interesting, I've made it into an ethics of love class. So basically this class will be teaching you skills so that you can love well. The idea is that if you can love well, you will be naturally, automatically an ethical person. <laughs> so this will get you uh, way ahead of, <laughs> of learning ethical systems and not knowing when to apply them. This will give you actual practical skills that you can use in your relationships. Uh, we will be focusing on romantic relationships, but those skills apply obviously anywhere, right? If you know how to love well in romantic relationships, believe me, you can love anybody else because <laughs> those are the most challenging ones, right? The romantic relationships are the most challenging ones. So you will be learning here 
all the skills that you need to attract love, to sustain love, to work through problems in love, to overcome crises in love, to create a lasting relationship in spite of the problems, in spite of the difficulties. Um, and this, this is going to be one of the most useful classes of your college experience. So that will be the class. So we'll be looking at seven authors. I'm gonna put them in the chats. So you have their names. Um, and we'll talk about buying the books in a second. So let me see why, okay, everyone. Okay, so first we'll be studying uh, the Song of Songs uh, by Solomon. Then we'll be doing the Symposium. I'm just writing them down in the chat by Plato. Then we'll do Bridge to the Soul, and I'll introduce each of these works in a second by Rumi. We'll do the Groundwork by Kant. We'll do Works of Love by Kierkegaard. Uh, I and Thou by Buber, and then 2B2 by Iri Garay. So I'll introduce briefly each one of these works so you have an idea what will what you're getting into. So the first um, of these works is a very ancient work written in uh, 1000 BC, and it was written by a very um, wise king. He was the second king of the kingdom of Israel at the time. So this is situated in present day Israel, of course. Um, so this king, of course, was well known uh, in terms of the art of love. He was a very beloved king. He himself had a thousand wives and several more thousand concubines. So he was definitely adept at the art of love. And in this particular text, we are going to mainly focus on the art of seduction. So if you've always wanted to become a better seducer, <laughs> this is going to be the text for you. He will, the, the text that he has written, which features by the way, a female character, she's the one going to be teaching, right? In, in, in the text, he's not the one teaching, he will be teaching through this woman's voice. And she is going to really unpack for us what it means to be seductive, what it means to attract love and to keep it. So that will be our first text from 1000 BC. We will then travel. So in this class, we travel both in space and in time. So we'll travel in time and in space to Greece, um, 300 BC approximately with Plato. And the translation here, symposium, is not really a good translation for this work. The, the work should actually be called um, the party, <laughs> right? That's what it was. It was a drinking party where everybody got together to drink. And at one point, someone said, let's stop drinking and let's just, you know, let's pontificate, let's discourse on love. And so in this book, you have all of the different perspectives on love by these different characters. Um, there's even a woman invited at the table to talk about love. Most of them are male, of course. And in this particular text, we are going to discover a very important skill, which is how to attract your soulmate. So if we, if some of us still believe in the soulmate, right? Some of us have given up and there's no soulmate, anything goes. <laughs> but for those of us who still believe in the soulmate, there are here very important tips on how to attract that soulmate. So you don't end up with the wrong person if there is such a thing. So that will be Plato. Then we will continue to travel. Now we enter medieval times, 12th, I think 12th century um, CE. This is Rumi. This is in the empire of Persia, the Persian empire. Uh, Rumi actually writes in Persian. Uh, this is now in the region of present day Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. This is the region where Rumi is from. And he will be talking mostly about overcoming fear when it comes to love. He's going to say one of the main obstacles to true love is the, the shackles of fear that we build around our hearts. And so his his poetry, the, the goal of his poetry will be to really release us from these shackles and to give us the courage to love, even when it's risky, even when it's scary, right? So that would be rude. Then we'll go to the 18th century with Immanuel Kant in Germany, and we'll study the groundwork. And in this particular text, we are going to learn a definition of respect. What does it mean to respect others? And what does it mean to respect ourselves? Um, Kant is going to say that one of the main components of love, if you can't do that, if you don't have respect for others and yourselves, you do not know how to love, right? So we're gonna talk about that aspect with Kant. Then we'll travel north to Denmark, 19th century, Kierkegaard, works of love. And there we're going to learn about the power of hope. And what this means is that when a relationship is going very badly, <laughs> which some of us have already experienced, 
uh, and one feels that there's no hope, that there's no way you can fix this, there's no way out, he's going to teach us how to cultivate hope. Um, and, and hope not as a feeling, but as an action, as a positioning in the relationship. And he's going to explain to us how powerful that hope can be and how transformative that hope can be for the relationship. So if you're looking to transform the relationship, you will want to learn to cultivate that, um, that hope. And he's going to teach us how to do that. Then we go back to Austria, South, uh, still Europe, uh, 20th century now with Buber. And we're going to basically relearn um, the sacredness of relationships. We have forgotten this a bit, right? Relationships have become a bit um, like uh, we consume them, right? We can go shopping for people now. You know, you swipe left, swipe right. <laughs> you, can get, you can get you a date for the night, no problem. You put it in your, you know, little basket. So we are in a way, there's a danger, right? With this kind of consumeristic approach to relationships. And Buber is going to kind of um, uh, highlight that and, and, and show us how to reclaim the sacredness of human beings and the sacredness of, of relationships in a way that is um, in uh, avoiding the trap of consumerism. Uh, and finally, we will end with our first actual woman writer, right, Luce Irigurai, who is uh, 20th century also, uh, French-Italian. And in her text, we are going to really explore uh, we're going to go uh, a little deeper in the art of lovemaking, right? There's not much that we have spoken in the class about, about sex, about the sexual encounter. She's going to develop this that as an art, right? This is something that we have to learn to do in order to become good at. So we're going to finish with that kind of um, sexy twist <laughs> in the class. Okay, so that's the program. Uh, any questions uh, about the program so far? I'm seeing all your faces. Put your hand on the screen there, question. Anything? Okay. All right. Um, yes, um, Jalal, go ahead. Um, just a question. Um, do you know how many pages you'd have to read or like how are we going to go about the text? Yeah. So if you look in the syllabus, I it's always, it's not the whole book, it's certain pages. And those are in the syllabus. Let me find, let me reclaim my syllabus here. Yeah. So you always have some pages to read. Um, my goal, my fantasy, right, is that you will like one or two of the books so much that you read the whole thing at one point, right, maybe in the month of July, <laughs> right, but of course you don't have to read more than those assigned pages. Um, so, uh, also, hopefully you have already bought the books because uh, class is going very fast, <laughs> right, so I mean, let me let me ask this, I'm curious, how many of you already bought the books, put your hand in the screen if you already bought the books. Okay, I see one person, two, three, okay. Uh, the rest of you hurry up, <laughs> right? They are in the QC bookstore, the online bookstore. You can get all of them there. Uh, Filippo, question? Yes, I have bought the book already, but it won't come in until tomorrow at 10 p.m. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna be delayed because it was it was scheduled to come in today and then it was delayed twice already. So I have to I have to see with that. Yeah, so you guys are lucky. The first book that we're doing, The Song of Songs, right? This is, if, if it doesn't come on time, you can find it anywhere on the internet. I'm going to put in the chat what you would look for. You just look for Song of Songs. By Song. Does it have to be Ariel Block? What is that? <laughs> oh, that's the translation. Uh, a, a trans what do you mean a translation? The no. songs of songs, there's many translations. Oh, it doesn't matter. It, anything. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, then I have a PDF version of a yeah, different yeah, one. Yeah. I mean, you can all find this in a Bible if you have, you know, a Bible at home. If you don't, you can go on the internet, type Song of Songs by Solomon. Don't make, don't mix it up with Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. <laughs> That's not what we're doing, right? So, and it's, it's, it's supposed to be only eight chapters, right? It's, it's eight small chapters. Um, it's, it's a biblical text. So, the, so you can find this. So, so if you don't have the book on time by Thursday, you can certainly use this. And then the rest of the rest, uh, hopefully by next week, you'll have your books because then we'll really need them. Uh, Pavlova, question? Yeah, so I got some of the books in the PDF or online. Um, so, Specifically for symposiums, because the pages are weird. Do you have like the reference of pages for online books? So you need to make sure you get the right edition for all of these books. Otherwise, you're going to be lost, right? 
Um, yeah, I went by ISBN. So I went yes. by, so, yeah. And you should be good. It should work um, in terms um, of, no? The pages that mention on the syllabus, those are the pages for introduction. That's why I asked. So, uh, because it's like okay, two pages see. per page. I, see. I don't know. Okay, let's talk after class um, about okay. Let, let's take thank you it. yeah we'll talk a little bit and anybody else who has problem like that we can talk after class figure it out okay so yes so get the books now um let me do a little bit of initiation before we get into the logistics on how to read philosophy because you're going to be doing some heavy reading over the next three weeks and some of the material is going to be difficult so i want to really initiate you slowly especially as a lot of you are first timers in philosophy it's a very specific discipline, right? It's not uh, like other disciplines where you open the textbook and you understand what you read. Philosophy, you will open the textbook and you will not understand what you read. <laughs> this is what is going to happen. So I will explain why, and then I will explain how, right? So first of all, why? Why is it when we open philosophy and even when you will open the poetic works, right? We're gonna start with some poetry, some dialogues, and even then you will read and not understand what he tried to say, right? So one thing we have to realize is that philosophy, unlike most disciplines in, in life that you're going to be studying, has to do with what we call the metaphysical realm. So in other words, most of everything you're studying belongs to the physical realm, right? So if you're studying science, if you're studying history, if you're studying chemistry, um, if you're studying political science, biology right this is all dealing with the realm of the physical and so when people speak of something you can see the thing <laughs> right you have a sense of what they're talking about philosophy is dealing with this other realm <laughs> right called the metaphysical realm which translates the realm beyond the physical this is the realm of our emotions this is the realm of our intuitions this is the realm of our ideals this is the realm of how we think life should be um, this is when we're thinking about things like God or, or the soul or what is the good or what is love, right? These are all things that you can't really touch or smell or taste, right? So philosophy actually is talking about that dimension of the unseen that surrounds our lives, right? I don't know if you, uh, any of one of you ever sensed this, right? But we have a life where everything is seen and everything you can touch, but there's also a life which is invisible. How many of you have sensed that there is also an invisible life? Um, you can put your hand in the screen if you're feeling me, right? So absolutely, right? There is also an invisible realm that surrounds us and philosophy explores that realm, right? And so that's why many philosophers, as they're exploring the realm, are talking about things that cannot be seen, that cannot be, uh, that are not visible. And so they struggle often with their words and sometimes they just default into poetry which is what we're gonna see, right? And other times they try to explain, but it's difficult to explain because it's talking about something invisible, something which is not part of the physical realm. And that's, so that's the main reason, right? Why philosophy is hard because the, the writers themselves, the philosophers themselves are struggling to express what they're sensing, what they're seeing in the metaphysical realm in words, in a language that normally applies only to the physical realm. Right. So that's the reason that philosophy often is difficult to to read and to understand. OK, um, I saw a hand. It, it just left. So I'm assuming the problem is resolved. OK, so now here is how you're going to go about it. Right. When you enter these texts, some of which will be very difficult. I'm going to do right now a four part initiation. So I'm going to start here in the chat. First thing you need to have when you read philosophy is a pencil okay why <laughs> why do you need a pencil to read philosophy it's very simple um let me show you actually i must have a book here somewhere um i want to show you how i read uh ah, yes here's a good one this, yes here's one of my books any book actually that i'm gonna read gonna look like that um find a good example yes so if you can see here right as I'm reading, I'm circling, I'm underlining, I'm putting exclamation points, I'm bolding certain passages. The reason I'm doing that is that it's difficult material and I wanna be able to retain some of it, right? So when I'm reading something difficult, most of the time I don't understand everything, so I leave that. But when I do understand something, boom, I underline it, I circle it, I, I put an exclamation point, this is an idea I want to remember. And by the time I'm done, 
with the reading, I actually have retained quite a bit. So when you're reading your philosophy books, this is why I ask you, it's better to have the physical copy, right? I think you can also underline with the Kindle and stuff. But you want to be able to underline, to annotate, to put question marks, exclamation points, so that you are actually engaging with the text. The more the text feels sought after, the more it will open up to you. It's like a love story between you and the text, right? So the more you seek, the more you try to penetrate inside the text, the more you're you know, really grappling with the text, the more it will open up. And so it's very important. So the pencil is a fundamental part of this. Now, second step is to take your time, time. So here I will explain what I mean. Nothing will enter you unless you have love for it, right? In other words, if you don't like a topic, you're not going to be good at it. It's not going to enter you. You're not gonna retain it, right? Let me ask you this, um, actually. How many of you have a class that you really hate with a professor that you really hate? Okay, great. I had one like that. Um, so, and notice, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about this. Probably this class you didn't do so good, <laughs> right? Why? Is it because you're stupid? No, it is because you hate the class. <laughs> and so anything the professor is saying is not entering you, right? I had a class in, uh, it was ethics actually. <laughs> One of the worst classes I ever took in college was ethics. And um, I hated the professor so much, I could not muster, I couldn't get the A, I couldn't do it, just I couldn't. <laughs> I had the potential to do it, I had the brains to do it, I just couldn't bring myself <laughs> to do the work for this professor. So. Um, so very important as you're entering these texts to do it with love. In other words, to take your time. You're going to do it in a spirit of enjoyment. In other words, what I want you to do when you're reading these texts, I want you to pick the best time of the day or the best time of the week when you're relaxed, right? When you're sitting at home, maybe with a cup of chai tea and the cat is on the window and you're relaxed. And now you're like, ah, I'm going to read. I'm going to enjoy this. Now, the way you're going to enjoy it is to not try to understand it. This is very important. As you read these texts, I am not expecting you to understand what you read. I am simply expecting you to experience what it's like to dwell in the presence of a great mind. So you are not expected to understand the text. You are expected to understand my lectures, but not the text. The text, I just want you to experience. Even if it's completely foreign, you don't understand anything, enjoy that. Enjoy the feeling of not understanding anything, <laughs> right? And, and then you will actually gain much more from it than if you, you know, kind of plow through it with anger and frustration. I'm so serious about this enjoyment part of the text is that I am happy even if you read less than what I have assigned, right? It's better if you're a slow reader, right? Because there's people who are fast readers, people are slow readers. If you're a slow reader and you struggle with reading, I prefer you read less and enjoy it, than you read the whole thing in a spirit of anger, frustration and resentment and, <laughs> right? So read less and uh, you'll do an assignment on it, but do based on what you read. It's better for me that than you plow through it with frustration. If you're a fast reader, you have no excuse. You should be reading the whole <laughs> assigned readings, right? But in general, uh, this is a really important one. In fact, uh, I, I said time, but actually what I meant is enjoyment, right? You want to enjoy these readings, even if you cannot understand them. Okay, third aspect of reading philosophy is urgency. I want you to read with a sense of urgency. Every single one of these texts I have chosen because they contain gems of wisdom when it comes to interpersonal relationships, which we all struggle with, <laughs> right? The, 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 our relationships is the, the main crisis of our age. We can do so much as a civilization, but when it comes to relationships, we fail over and over again. So I want you to read these texts with a sense of urgency that as you're reading, maybe today on this page, on the next page, I'm going to find the key to my relationship. I'm going to find something the author is saying that will completely unlock the, the problem that we are having as a couple or as a sibling uh, or as a child or mother, parent. Right? I want you to read with expectation that at any moment, on any page, you, your whole life could be transformed. Right? I picked those texts specifically because I knew they would have practical, concrete, urgent advice when it comes to relationships. So you want to also read right with a sense of urgency. And finally, you want to read together, never alone. 
there are three things you should never do alone. <laughs> if you find yourself doing them alone, you're in trouble. Drinking, <laughs> drugs, <laughs> and philosophy, <laughs> right? If you're gonna drink, make sure you're with people. And if you're gonna take a drug, don't do it by yourself. You're gonna fly out the window, <laughs> maybe, right? If you take the wrong dose. So you always wanna be well surrounded and philosophy you don't wanna do alone. In other words, you don't wanna be thinking in a corner by yourself, what I should be, how I should be living. This is my, how I'm going to live my life. No, you should be dialoguing about it. You should be sharing ideas with your partners, with your siblings, with your friends. I think this is the right way to go. What do you guys think? And together we journey right towards the truth. We can't journey alone. As soon as you're thinking by yourself, not communicating to anyone about what you're about to do, you're locked up in yourself and following just one view, you're going to make more mistakes than others, right? You want to always be in a spirit of dialogue, really uh, testing your ideas, discussing them with others, and then moving forward together. So well, that's why we'll be having these uh, groups at the beginning of each class. We'll have 20 minutes where you'll be in breakout rooms and you will be discussing uh, the text. Okay, so that's the initiation. Any questions on the initiation before we go into the workload, logistics of the class, anything? Okay, all right, let's go quickly now. Just let's take a few minutes to go into that and then we'll take a break. Okay, if you're following in the syllabus, you'll see several things. Course requirements, you'll see attendance, right? Obviously, the class is going extremely fast. Um, so you miss a class, you miss the equivalent of a month. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Um, thankfully, I do record the material. So if you miss maybe a chunk of it, you can, uh, or if, if I go too fast, you can go back and, and check it out. Um, but you will need to be in class at least the first 20 minutes for sure, uh, because I will. that will be the group participation, which is graded, right? So the breakout rooms are graded. So you need to be there for that in order to get that, that um, uh, those points. Okay, so there are going to be one, two, two regular assignments um, that each time we meet, you have to have done before class. So these are the two main assignments. Every time we meet, you know you have them to do. So the first one is called the reading assignment. And the second one is called the audio question. So I'll start with the audio question. So anytime we have a new author, except today, <laughs> where I will introduce the author, but usually when we have a new author, you're going to have to listen first to what I call, a, to, to a recording of me teaching on that author, right? So it's, it's a recording from another class, but it's me basically introducing the author to the class. So you first listen to that before you do anything. Um, and then you do what is called the audio question. So if you look at your syllabus, at the very last page of the syllabus, you have something called audio questions. And you have there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven audio questions. Uh, these are questions based on those lectures. So you listen to the lecture and you answer this question, one, one per lecture, right? Each time we do a new author. So, so for next time, for example, next time Thursday, you will do the audio question on Solomon based on the lecture in class. Usually it will be a recorded lecture, but today I will do it in class. So the audio question is one, uh, is gonna be half a page, uh, single space where you answer simply the question based on the lecture. And so that is the first assignment that you will have every single time. Um, and, you, and, uh, and you need to uh, put that into the drive before class starts, okay? So before class starts, that's in the drive. Um, I will not accept any late papers on that. Why? Because I need you to have that information before I lecture on the author, otherwise you're going to be lost, right? This is the introductory material. This will get you, this will help you do the reading and it will help you understand the lecture. So there cannot be any late um, uh, uh, assignments on that because I need you to have listened to that before we do everything else or you'll be lost, right? It's very easy in this class to lose, to, to, to fall off the boat, right? So you need to make sure that you, you keep very much in the pace of the class. Uh, and yes, Mia, you can do it early, but don't hand it in early <laughs> because it'll mess me up. Um, so you can do anything you want early, but hand it in uh, at the time when it's due. 
Okay, so all right, that's the audio question. And the other assignment you do each time we meet is the reading assignment. Um, and this assignment is very simple. It's one page, four paragraphs, single spaced. And these are basically, you're reading the text and you're formulating two questions and two critiques. Okay, so in other words, you're reading and you're stumbling probably on a, on a word or an, on an image, a metaphor or a sentence. And I want you to simply question that and be like, oh, I wonder what this means. I, I'm struggling with this. I'm wrestling with this. What does it mean? What does this metaphor mean? What does this word mean? What does this sentence mean? And then I want you to try to answer that. Well, maybe it means this, maybe it means that. So you do a whole paragraph, right? Two questions like that. And then two critiques, two more paragraphs. And this is now, this time you understand, but you disagree, right? Oh, I disagree with Solomon on his you know, perspective here on woman, or I disagree with Kierkegaard on, on what he's saying about hope. And you tell me about that. Okay, so that's basically you wrestling with the text, beginning to really wrestle and engage with the text and, and interrogate the text. And, and, and that will be the, the assignment for that. And again, this assignment is due uh, there's, I will count it only if it is on time and if you are here, okay, you need to be here. Why? Because this assignment you will use in the breakout rooms. I want you to have a copy ready with you as you enter the breakout room at the beginning of each class and you're going to share. You're going to share your questions. You're going to share your critiques and, and then everybody else will share and you will respond to each other. So that assignment is only counted if I see you in the breakout room <laughs> and if you're here uh, on time. Okay, um, a couple of questions. Filippo, go ahead. Yes, so for the audio question, uh, we have to watch a video of the lecture before we do the reading. Yeah. And for the video lecture, which playlist from the YouTube is it? So as you go in the Blackboard, you'll see the tab called Recorded Lectures. And when you go there, it's not yet there because I haven't done it yet. But when you go through that tab, you will be immediately in our playlist and you will see today's lecture. You'll see the introduction to Solomon and then you'll see all the other introductions. <laughs> I'm going to put them on. Uh, it's not yet there. I haven't done it yet. Oh, so, so it's not there yet. That's OK. Thank you did a general <laughs> link to my channel. Okay, Jalal, question? Um, just to uh, reiterate what you said. Um, so at the end of the summary, we just put two questions and two critiques on there, on the page, so or do we have that for class? Yes, uh, it's not a summary, right? It's it's four paragraphs of you yeah. questioning and crit criticizing. You will hand them and you will put it in the Google Drive before class. And then you, okay, have, yeah. copy, then you have one copy for you to use. Um, as you're talking in the breakout rooms. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's the four paragraphs and then we include in the paper the two questions and the two critiques. Of course, uh, it's paragraphs to two questions and the two critiques, I'm sorry. Oh, let me do it like this. Paragraph one is question one. Paragraph two is question two. Paragraph three is critique one. Paragraph four is critique two. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, okay, I don't see any more questions. Okay, so those are the two main assignments. Um, let's see, I see a question in the chat. Yeah, you can go over as long as it's a page. I want to see pretty much a page. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, um, sanctimonious about it, but it has to be, you know, uh, substantial. Um, and sure, I mean, if you want to go over, I'd rather not. <laughs> Just keep it one page would be better. Um, okay. So back to the syllabus. Um, Anyways, uh, at the end of each class, I'm going to write down on Blackboard all the work you have to do for the next class. So if you're a little lost now, don't worry. I'm going to always have a homework announcement <laughs> so you know what to do exactly. Um, half page, single space is the uh, audio question. Um, yeah. OK, now once a week, you will have a test and an essay. So let me talk about that a little bit. So once a week, you'll have um, a test and the essay and um 
Uh, the test is going to be entirely based on class lectures. So basically how good you do on the test will be based on how well you take notes. <laughs> and in this particular class, you want to take as detailed notes as possible. Basically everything I'm saying is coming on your paper, <laughs> right? So you want to, so this class will actually, this is a kind of, this is a more European approach to teaching, right? There's no PowerPoint. It's very much you're listening and writing down whatever is being spoken, right? So make sure, so you will need to increase your note taking capacity. If you're not a good note taker, you want to get better, right? During this class, you will get better. So make sure you write down almost everything. The more detailed your notes, the better your test answers will be because they will be entirely based on your notes on the lectures, right? In the test, don't try to give me anything else than what we talked about in class. The test is only there for me to see that you're absorbing the material that I'm talking about in the lecture, that you're absorbing the lecture. So don't do any extra study, right? Don't bring in any other extra information. Just base yourself on, on the lectures. Um, Filippo, you had a question, I think? or. Yes, for the exam, I see that they're due on Saturdays. Does that mean we have to be present in Zoom call to take the exam or no, no they're just like take home exams? Yeah, yeah. And you have all the questions here in the syllabus, by the way, right? The, the questions here are already given to you, test questions on the syllabus. You have all of them so that you can already begin working during the week on your test question, right? Each test question is one page single spaced. So you have usually two or three test questions. So it will be a total of two or three pages. So it's pretty substantial writing. So it's a, uh, let me write that down here in the chat. So each test question, right? Each question is one page single space, right? Um, and it will be based mostly on the lecture. So make sure you take very good notes. It will also, I will ask you, ask you in the test to quote from the text. So as we're, so always bring your book to class, right? As I'm going, reading through passages, you wanna be underlining those and keeping those for your test, right? Because anything you say in the test has to be based on the lecture, but also on the reading. So you wanna really, and again, I won't ask you to read anything extra, whatever we're talking about, you bring in the te test, right? So make sure you're underlining whatever we're talking about and then that will go into your test. Okay, any questions on the test? Um, No? Okay. All right, the essay. This is a fun part. This is once a week to do the same day as the test. The essay is 1.5 pages, single spaced, and it features basically the essay. I want you to look at a relationship crisis that you are going through, preferably. It doesn't have to be you, but try to look into a relationship crisis you are in or were in in the past. It's fine. Or you're seeing people around you in a crisis, right? And I, so I want you to tell me about the crisis. That's 50% of the assignment. And then the other 50%, I want you to become like a therapist to that crisis. I want you to bring in whatever readings we have studied, whatever things we have discussed in class. And I want you to bring that wisdom into the situation. What can you say to the two people you are trying to help? Or rather, what would Plato say? What would Kierkegaard say? What would Irigaray say, right? Each time we study these, these people, you bring in, what would they say? How would they help? What would be the advice they would give? So you're basically uh, doing therapy on your situation uh, based on the material that we study. You're going to become a existentialist therapist. <laughs> so, so that's the essay and that's due the same day as the test. Okay, any questions on any of the work so far? Okay, last thing is a final project. You wanna start that. So this is actually final project is you're going to read something that I wrote, which was inspired by this class actually. So this is a commentary on the Song of Songs, which we're about to study, um, but it brings in everything that we studied in the class. So it's a really beautiful way to summarize everything we've done. It's instead of your final exam, I'm giving you this because it's very synthetic. It synthesizes everything. Um, I will probably ask you only to read in that book because we have we don't have much time. I will ask you to read the preface, the introduction, and two chapters of your choice. Uh, and then based on that reading, I want you to give me simply a one page response, single spaced, right? Where you tell me the what you liked and what you didn't like about the book, right? Now I have so there is a on that you can rent it online if you want, or I can give you a hard copy. 
um, for $20. So that hard copy I will leave if you're interested, you can tell me at the, after class. I will leave in the philosophy department. So if you stop by campus, this is Powder Maker uh, 350. You will talk to the secretary, Mei Lian, and she will give you the hard copy uh, for $20. So if you wanna purchase it, uh, you can. <laughs> but just let me know because I have to buy those. So, uh, Anybody know already that they want a hard copy of this book or you just want to, uh, okay, Suresh, uh, anybody else? Uh, Delgado, okay, who else? Okay, if you change your mind, let me know, right? I will, I will bring it to the, to the department. Davidov, yes, also, okay, or is that a question? <laughs> Davidov, is, are you asking a question or are you raising your hand? <laughs> Okay, uh, you want a hard copy? I'm raising my hand, yeah. You know what, whoever wants a hard copy, email me. <laughs> Just email me and tell me you want a hard copy and I will I will try to have those uh, as soon as possible in the philosophy department, okay? Um, good. Now, where was I? Okay, so I think I've oh, finished <laughs> finally the whole workload and all that. Um, okay, great. Let's take a break. Um, let's take a break. Two, two minutes. Can we do two minutes? Just we'll go to the bathroom and come back. <laughs> so we come back at 3.10 exactly. Uh, oh, we have a question. Uh, uh, Davida, ideally find some people. I know there are people around you who are struggling in relationships. I don't like those TV relationships. <laughs> find, can you do that? Can you find some actual people? in your circle of friends or family, um, everybody's struggling. So <laughs> surely you will find. Uh, Filippo, question? Yes, for the final project, we have to read the whole book. Mm -mm. Ideally, yes, but <laughs> because we have such short time, you just read the preface. Oh, preface, introduction, two chapters, I yes. see. Sorry, thank you. Castellanos, question? Um, can you explain again for the essays? Yes, essays, 1.5 pages, single spaced. It's uh, you find a relationship crisis in your life or in the lives of people around you. You tell me about it. And then you are going to offer advice to that relationship. So you're going to, to try to ask yourself, what would Plato say? What would Rumi say? And try to bring in those philosophers that we will have studied that week um, and try to see how can they help? How can they help resolve the situation? Does that make sense? So we need to pick because i like for example we're gonna go through like three or two authors for the first essay so do we have to put each author's point of view or just pick one of them yeah you can just pick one some of you did you do both but you can also just pick one author yeah okay yeah. okay um, thank you suresh Professor, I just want to let you know, I emailed you that I wanted to buy the book. I okay. just replied to the first email I sent when you asked about the name for the subject. Yes, that's good. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, excellent. All right, let's take a break because I'm dying over here. Um, <laughs> we're going to take, okay, now it's 310. Let's go until, um, let's see, let's do 315. Shall we do that? Let's take a, um, so come back in exactly five minutes or yeah, in four minutes now. Uh, and then we'll, I'll start to lecture on the Song of Songs. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit.
Okay, everybody, please turn on your faces. Thierry Delgado Singh, Corpaz Romero, Hussein Hooper, Gatula Jalal, Pokrel, Suresh, Kogan. Let me see your faces. <clears throat> right. um, okay, introduction to the Song of Songs. Oh, I forgot to stop the recording. <laughs> Let me stop it and start over here. <clears throat> 